ending one minute at a time. I was blind, but now I see. Working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. Ideas are unbreakable. If you had one shot, everything I'd ever read, heard, seen was now organized and available. Now you fucking khakis. Life moves pretty fast. The Biohacking Secret Show. Dr. Dominic Nishwitz is a dentist and naturopath, a world specialist in biological dentistry and ceramic implants, and the president of the International Society of Metal Free Implantology, ISMI. With his father, Dr. Nishwitz co founded DNA Health and Aesthetics Center for Biological Dentistry in Tubin- Tubingen. Yes. <laughs> God. There we go. All right. To begin in Germany in 2015, Dr. Nishwitz has exclusively used ceramic implants since 2013, placing more than 3,000 to date. A pioneer in the field of holistic otendology. Man, I'm having a rough time with the intro today. <laughs> Let me just try this one more time. Is it, is it odontology? Yeah, it's correct. Uh, holistic odontology. Yeah, it's weird. All right. I'm going to take it from the top one more time. This was, that was Bush League. I got to, I got to get it at least like halfway decent. Um, all right, here we go. <laughs> if I, if I fuck it up again, I'll do it in post. I just, I usually get it the first try. There's, there's not so many $5 words. Here we go. All right. Dr. Dominic Nishwitz is a dentist and naturopath, a world specialist in biological dentistry and ceramic implants, and the president of the International Society of Metal-Free Implantology. With his father, Dr. Nishwitz co-founded DNA Health and Aesthetics Center for Biological Dentistry in Tübingen, Germany in 2015. Dr. Nishwitz has exclusively used ceramic implants since 2013, placing more than 3,000 to date. A pioneer in the field of holistic odontology, Dr. Nishwitz regularly gives lectures around the world. He trains traditional dent dentists in biological dentistry and believes that all health starts in the mouth. Dr. Nishwitz, welcome to the Biohacking Secrets Show. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> for those of you guys uh, that, that, that are listening, I attempted that intro at least twice before finally getting it. So I'm thrilled right now. We're off to a great start. Um, Dr. Nishwitz, for someone who may not be familiar with the importance of oral health and how some of the implants can impact our biological health and our mitochondrial function, uh, maybe you could take a step back and I explain, you know, ceramic has replaced mercury or silver fillings, these dental amalgams that contain a known neurotoxin. Many people still have them in their mouths. How did this nonsense start? When did it start? How was it even justified? Can you explain uh, what's been going on there? Yeah, nowadays you can't even imagine, but um, it started back, I would say, 200 years ago, and actually French dudes invented it so let's say 1800 round about 1850 um dentistry was just a mechanical procedure where you just like basically filled um cavities with gold and they were called gold hammer fillings so you can imagine how a tiny hammer will hammer in gold and a tooth will maybe you would be able to do one or two two teeth a day and mm -hmm. these, these um i think it was they were brothers from um from uh, France, they, they just invented this alloy stuff. And basically it was just easier because amalgam is a, is a mesh or it's, an, it's not really an alloy um, of different materials, but as you said, highly toxic and non-radioactive uh, mercury is in there. And you could easily do, let's say 20 fillings a day because it's just a good working material that is easily easy to apply and it will last forever. And so at these times, let's say 200 years ago, in, they went to the U.S. and there was only one society. And this was the American Society for Dental Surgeons. And they were seeing pretty soon that people with amalgam fillings had problems, like neurological problems or eczema or all sorts of health issues. And they didn't have any research for sure, but they... Just thought, ah, this might not be the best idea. We hadn't seen this with the gold fillings. So they basically um, didn't accept dentists in their society that did amalgam fillings. But as, like with always with things economical, as those other dentists with amalgam fillings were able to make way more money because they did 20 fillings a day and 20 patients and the other ones only two, they soon formed their own society, which is known as the... 
American Dental Association, which still is the biggest um, dental society worldwide or in the US. And of course, the dental surgeons didn't make it because of less economical things. And yeah, the problem nowadays is, so let's say, for example, in Russia or in Scandinavia or in a lot of countries, mercury is banned. So there is no amalgam fillings anymore. But in, in Germany, it's still the stuff that insurance pay for, pays for. Same in the UK and, of course, same in the US. And the problem is that fillings or like all the like crowns, fillings, all the stuff you put in your mouth from a dental point of view, are not classified as in your body, but on top of your teeth, outside of your body, kind of like a device, like the laptop you're sitting in front of or this mouse. And of course, the device hasn't, do, hasn't, yeah, you don't need to make a tough toxicology on a device. So this is how they justify it. I, I, I know that the FDA is now uh, looking into um, maybe finally, um, yeah, yeah, taking mercury or like amalgam fillings out of business, but still it's like 200 years known and still it's a good thing to work with for the conventional dentistry and it's subsidized. So that's the main problem. And as it's not in your mouth or not in your body, it's of course not a problem, you know? Right, right. So a, a similar issue to what we have with certain uh, certain agricultural crops being subsidized that may not be healthy for, sorry, we're having a little bit of uh, li literally having trees chopped down around here. We've got a full house. We're up in at, at our lake house in Door County, Wisconsin. And like inside there's three dogs and uh, a bird named Tula that make a ton of noise. My family's running around. So I come outside to record the podcast on the porch, which uh, as, as you can see, Dom is pretty nice, but today happened to be a tree chopping and chipping day that I was unaware of. So I'm trying to turn the, turn the mic off while you're talking. So we're not getting that background noise, but, uh, uh hopefully the listeners will bear with us. Um, yeah, where some of these, where some of these crops, like, let's say like genetically modified corn, which we now know has, has, uh, Monsanto's roundup in there, you know, glyphosate. Um, we're seeing that destroy the gut and cause all of these other health issues, but because it's sub subsidized, it's put in so many different food products because it allows people to make their food pro companies to make their food products cheaper and turn a bigger profit and you're you're giving just another example of where if we want to improve our health and step outside of this paradigm we not only need to first follow the money to understand what's going on but we need to start demanding that some of this these organizations uh prioritize things besides just money Hundred percent agree. Perfect example. Yes, it's exactly the same. It's more profit oriented um, than anything else. And yeah, it's conventional dentistry. I've studied this. Uh, like all the dentists, it's the entrance card for what you later do. And yeah, it's not really taught in university that the mouth is part of the overall body. Of course, you study me medicine with all the with all the other medical doctors, but Let's say in the morning you study a little bit of physics and a little bit of um, all the sciences. So you, you learn basically that it's not a good idea to put, in, to put different alloys next to each other in your mouth. But then in the afternoon when, you, when you're in dental school, you're just placing a gold crown right next to an amalgam filling, which is a battery you learned in the, in the morning you shouldn't do. So it's kind of schizophrenic. And uh, like you know from all movies like Hangover, you're just a dentist. Yeah, you anyway is not a doctor. And yeah. Yeah, this is this is really how it is in university. So yeah, I'm I'm okay with as many Hangover references as we want to sprinkle in throughout this podcast. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's it's something where we if you think back to Alice in Wonderland, right? The the Mad Hatter came from the, the, that character came from the phrase mad as a hatter. And this is yep. because like at haberdashery is like the, 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 the hat manufacturers, the hat makers would use mercury and then they all started going crazy because it would get absorbed through their skin and, and it's, and it's a neurotoxin. Right. And to me, these types of situations where it's so obvious that something 
comes with health consequences. And then, you know, we've seen the smoking, many people have seen the smoking tooth video on YouTube, right? And, and, and we still have these organizations perpetuating this practice and not stepping in and saying, hey, let's use ceramic, let's use something else, right? It's, it's maddening to me, but really it's on us to step up and look out for our own health and not just assume that these organizations always have our best interest in mind, because there's a lot of examples where a lot, there's uh, the evidence points to them wanting us to die a slow, expensive death and eke as much out of each individual as we can. Fuck it. I'm going for the jugular. Let's do it. <laughs> um, tell me, and, and it's something that's touched me because, you know, my dad has Parkinson's. He's, he had a bunch of fillings in, you know, in, in his mouth. We had those taken out a couple of years ago and we still need to do more heavy metal detox. Um, I wanted to ask you because I had an interesting conversation with the neurosurgeon, uh, Dr. Jack Cruz, who's been on the biohacking secret show episode number three. And we were talking and I said, should, you know, We'd had my dad's uh, amalgams, his mercury amalgams or silver, you know, silver, I'm putting that in quotes, whatever, you, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'd had his removed. We hadn't, my mom hadn't really wanted to deal with it, you know? Um, and I asked Dr. Cruz recently if she should, and he said, I don't think so. He's like, honestly, he goes, I still have mine in. He goes, I think it's a bigger deal for people that are dealing with major health challenges. He goes, but if you're, if you're detoxing properly and you're exercising and sweating, he goes, and, and, and you have a, a, a good health status, um, not, not a, a super high priority. And I was kind of curious, what was, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I know there's, uh, I, I know you do this for a living, but it, it, it was, it was interesting to me and I thought I'd open it up for a little dialogue. <laughs> I think it's bullshit and it makes no sense. Um, given the fact that he also is a dentist before he was a neuro neurosurgeon and doesn't make any sense at all. So basically Hal Huggins is one of the first biological dentists and let's see it like this. The main source of mercury toxicity in your body is always your filling. Yeah, of course the environment is loaded with mercury and other heavy metals for sure. Your body, and I agree with... Um, and pred predatory fish. Predatory fish, big fish, tuna fish, saltfish, whatever. Um, I agree with um, Jack Cruz on that your body should be able to detox as, as extreme as possible. I think that's actually a survival strategy nowadays because those chemicals and whatever, the, the environment is just extreme to deal with. But... You should never have anything installed in your mouth 24 seven. It's obviously intoxicating you on a daily basis and is known to man as the most toxic non-radioactive element on earth. So why put an extra strain on your body? And I'm dealing with, of course, my patients, clientele is highly chronic sick patients, but also the, this is one side of the spectrum. But also, of course, a lot of patients coming from all over the world for health optimization, biohacking, athletes, CEOs, high performers. So if you want to have a 10 out of 10, you cannot have these things in your body. Of course, you might be able to compensate depending on what Dr. Cruz said. But why would you compensate if you have better alternatives? And this is kind of like a ticking time bomb. And there's so much research showing you like for years that the dentists are actually the ones that are the most toxic and that they have to deal with the stuff um, on a daily basis. And the pituitary of dentists is extremely full of um, toxic mercury because you breathe it in all day long. It's not just one right. time pulling out. And this it's released when, when I've seen it's released when you're drinking hot liquids like coffee and tea. Yes, it's getting released when you drink sour stuff, when you drink um, more acidic things. If you go to a dental cleaning, if you brush your teeth, if you actually, basically, if you're grinding, if you're chewing, whatever, like it's two to three micrograms. It's like just air, like you, you mentioned the uh, smoking tooth already. But if you know that it kills everything and it could be uh, a problem, basically, yeah, accelerating every sort of symptom, I would never leave it in a body's in a person's body. And I, was a, I was a little surprised by his answer as well. That makes no sense. But of course, I don't know what he was referring to. 
the yeah, regular- it, it's, it's it's not fair for me to not have him be able to, <laughs> to go back and forth and have a dialogue. Maybe he didn't know. Um, so maybe he said, leave it in there if you have a conventional dentist. Check, I would 100% agree because you would never drill out your amalgam fillings with safe, without safe removal strategies because then it's actually more toxic than leaving it in your body. So the conventional dentist normally just drills it out. Of course, then you have way more toxic vapor and way more material that you just swallow. So you can see it on our website or on all these videos that I'm presenting or in the book. We use rubber dam. We use um, a special suction called cleanup, which goes on top and has an under. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's so let's talk about this for someone who's thinking about for someone who's thinking about let's say uh, they or you know uh, someone they love has uh, mercury, a dental amalgams in their mouth, right? They're thinking about getting them removed. Can you walk us through a checklist of things that they should look for in the practitioner that they, uh, that, that, that they decide to work with, you know, what are like some of the musts, of course they can work with you and, and we'll give them your website. What is your website, by the way, for people that want to learn more about you and possibly work with you? Our website is, um, DNA aesthetics, um, dot D-E. But I think there are a lot of people uh, or a lot of um, doctors out there in the U.S. that can do a safe amalgam removal. So you don't have to fly out just for doing amalgam. So me personally, I'm only doing surgeries anyways. Okay. Um, but you have to look out for safe amalgam removal. And safe amalgam removal doesn't mean just the rubber dam. Yeah? The rubber dam doesn't protect you for, uh, in any sort of these vapors. The rubber dam only helps you kind of like a net so that if there's any particles, they will be in the rubber dam later. But mercury vapor goes through six, um, six layers of um, latex. So this won't work. Then we use a special suction. It goes on over the tooth and has a, as kind of like a, I don't know what you call it in English, but it will suck it up fast. It's called cleanup. And we, we, if possible, we drill around the filling and break it out so that we don't even have any mercury vapor. We have a huge machine in front of the patient. It's kind of like a huge um, suction device. It looks like a big oven. And it, it protects the patient and, of course, me and the staff because it sucks up 99.9% of all the vapors. It's really this diameter, and it's right there at the mouth. Sucks up everything that might be drilled. Yeah, like, like round about this. About, about the size of like a 16-inch softball? I would say it's a big, it's a big it looks like an oven, uh, like an oven tube. And it, it, it's called IQ Air. It's an air purifying system, 99.9%. Um, then when we removed um, the amalgam filling, we put something that um, binds uh, mercury from the dentin inside, of the, inside the cavity, which is mostly chlorella, or you could also go with, uh, with um, activated charcoal or any sort of binder. For a few minutes, you will see that the tooth gets more white. And then depending on the health of the patient, we will most likely just start with a temporary filling, like a glazinumeric filling or something like this, not placing um, a new definitive crown work right away. Most of the time you could, if it's a tiny filling could do a composite or something like this, but mostly we will go with a, with an initial detoxification phase so that your tooth doesn't get glued up with any like composites or ceramics if possible. Okay. It's in nice. the health innovation week first. Yes. So it's a lot of things. And, okay. And, and then once they're done, do you, do you put them on some chelating agents? Like, do you do a protocol with, with, uh, I mean, we use sometimes Quicksilver scientific push catch, which is like their liver sauce. And then, and then some binders taken half an hour later, do you use ETDA or DMSA or what do you guys do then to help them move it out of the body? Right. Cause now you've got it out of their mouth, but it's still in a lot of the tissues, right. From years and decades of releasing. So maybe I have to go a little bit deeper here, if that's okay for you, because please do. Because it's it, I thought in the beginning, let's say 15 years ago, that uh, removing amalgams and metals will be the holy grail, but it's not. So you have. I'd, this, I'd agree. From what I've seen, uh, I'd agree. It's one part of the equation, but the mouse has way more. We call it oral interference field or root causes. So what what we do when you send in a planning for our virtual treatment plan? 
We will look the, at the whole picture. There will be a melting fittings or any sort of metal, if it's gold or titanium, whatever. We, we remove all metals for various reasons. We can go into detail later. Then we look for root canal treated teeth, which are basically dead teeth that are full of bacteria and other toxins. We and I've heard these. I've heard these can affect like the body's circuitry and energetic flow throughout the body. I will. I will go into detail for in a second. Let's just um, I do a little bit of structure. Root canals are dead teeth full of bacteria, and we we will remove all of them and replace with ceramics. So 100% biocompatible things. And the third thing is we look for chronic side inflammation in your jawbone, which is called. NICO, NICO, or FDOJ, fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone, which is not even taught in university, but it is a chronic silent inflammation on your trigeminal nerve. Um, it can happen when basically after all, it, all extractions, but most of the patients in Western countries have their wisdom teeth extracted. Wisdom teeth, because you're asking for energetics, wisdom teeth from a meridian chart um, are connected to your adrenal glands, to your small, and, uh, small intestine and heart meridian, and the whole central nervous system gets crossed over there. So it's a huge area of chron uh, like chronic um, fatigue or eczema, small intestinal problems. It's really insane what I'm doing there on a daily basis, which is not even known. And it's also a lot of research there, but it's not in university yet, even if there are tons of peer-reviewed papers. We can go into detail of all these topics, but I can tell you one thing because you asked about the mercury chelation. I'm getting there right away. So we plan to remove all oral interference, remove the source, and your body heals itself. We do this after preparing our patients for at least four to six weeks with a nice nutritional design from macro to micro so that they come in boosted. The liver phase one, two, excretion, whatever, is just top-notch. We do loads of IVs, nutrition, hyperbaric, you name it, surrounding this week where we remove everything with the goal of optimal health and install things that are neutral and biocompatible so that we basically um, get the patient's health back and then use all things recovery to boost and give him the nice design for an anabolic phase after this to build bone tissue and also integrate these implants for the next, let's say, three to four months. So you remove all the garbage. You remove, that's a huge detoxification already being prepared for this and then chasing it with binders and having all the nutrients that help you with um, excretion and biotransformation will bring you, it's, it's a warp speed healing. And you will feel on the next day, you cannot imagine. And then because of the chelation you asked, the first time we think about chelation or anything like this is when the first three or four months are over and the body was in an, in an anabolic state instead of catabolic and all, everything like, kind of like the basement is now healed well because your body will take all the nutrients to build bone and tissue and tissue and whatever and it shouldn't be used for a heavy detoxification because you know you will need loads of minerals to detox stuff but you also need loads of minerals and protein to build bone and tissue so first things first first get the source out the worst thing you can do actually is chelating patients while there's still anything in the in your mouth remotely toxic, like the five things I just mentioned. Mm. Really critical, and I work with a, a huge database, a huge um, yeah group of environmental doctors like Dr. Dietrich Klinger, Thomas Rao, all these all the guys you see in the root cause, all my friends kind of, and on t and partially also my mentors. And I learned from Dietrich Klinger that. This is like the most crucial thing to do. Never start any heavy chelation before everything that is installed in your body, could also be somewhere else in your body, is removed. Because otherwise you're trying to upregulate something, whereas the source is not out yet. That means you're standing under the shower, trying to dry off, but it's not possible. Yeah? Whereas if you're detoxing heavy and you have the source in there, it's even worse because you just redistributing and you said your dad has Parkinson, you might want to send his panoramic and I'm happy to do a preliminary treatment for him and just see what he needs to do with Parkinson's a neurological disease, autoimmune, whatever, all these things. And of course, toxicity is a big thing there and the mouse needs to be 
100%. Otherwise, you can't climb the ladder of Optima. It's just the entrance, basically. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you. I may take you up on that because I'm, I'm fascinated with what you're saying right now. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure that you're training a tremendous amount of biological dentists. And I'm over here thinking that you need to be training a lot more because you guys are approaching this. Not only, I, I don't even want to use the word holistically. Uh, you're, you're approaching this in a very innovative and aligned fashion. And I'm appreciating your approach as you're, as you're talking through it. So thank you. So um, biological dentistry, the way out, how I describe it is, it is the overlap of high tech dentistry, functional medicine, health optimization, biohacking. That's what it is. And we train dentists with the ISMI and we have 33 um, specialists for biological dentistry and ceramic implants trained. But this is actually mostly in the high tech dentistry level things. All the other parts that I was talking about with the nutrition, the micronutrients, the micronutrients, the recovery tools, they're all things. Optimization is where I need to so well start training right now. And actually, like you said, I need to train a full army because I won't cut it. So I can maybe do 30,000 surgeries. That's nothing. But if you train, let's say, 1,000 dentists that are also interested in, like I say, the cool kid dentists that are biohackers that do all the things to help their patients reach top level. That's it. And this is a, this is new school. You need new school dentists. And luckily I have a, I have a troop of those and yeah, we're just starting. Imagine we have thousands of them. We can do 30 millions of surgery. Of course, it's at the moment just repairing the stuff that dentists already ruined, like, because we didn't know better, but the future generations. So I don't know about you, but I have a few, I have three kids and a wife. So the goal would be that, you don't need a dentist for repairing things because if your lifestyle and all the other things is top notch and you care about optimal health, you have perfect teeth, no need to remove anything or no need to go to cleaning or not even need to brush your teeth if your diet is on point. I teach this for kids. I, I, I love it. And I mean, I'm, I'm very glad that you brought this up because you know like my, in my mom's situation let's say she was like yeah I, at some point i'll get it taken out and you know maybe maybe work with with dominic but until then you know uh, it's not going to be for a year or two it would be a big mistake to have her start doing chelation in any capacity because she still has the source in her mouth and that's what that's what you're saying you learned from dr Diedrich klingart who's also um someone whose work I, I appreciate very much and if if we were to go a little bit further um you mentioned some of the micro and macronutrients and things that are needed for like helping the body regenerate and grow strong teeth and bone. And you've talked about your goal is almost to make yourself obsolete. So part one is, but let's talk about some of those macro and micronutrients for strong teeth and bone. And then after that, I'd like you to talk a little bit about Weston A. Price and how, uh, what some of the things that he discovered and how some of his discoveries have influenced your approach. So the first question, so I think, yeah, nutrition is basically where everything started for me 20 years ago. So I have a lot of knowledge in the field, but the goal was to have something easily presentable for my patients. Like it's, it's a 10 page called the food design concept and it's independent of all mindsets, meaning you can do it as a vegan or as a carnivore. doesn't matter. It's based on macronutrient timing and calculations. So, the most critical and most important building block of your life is, I'm sure you know, it's protein. And the same goes for teeth and bone and tissue, of course, because it's the same. So I will always have my patients have at least 1.5 to 2 grams per kilograms of protein a day, at least after surgery, better also before surgery, so that they're in an anabolic phase. You know, you... Um, so we make more a little bit of a protein pacing and kind of strategy so that there is always a pool of amino acids. So of course we will supplement with essential amino acids with all things that most biohackers already know or bodybuilders know. That's where I started with all this. And what, what brand do you use for essential amino acids? I, I have my own company. It's um, a hypoallergenic supplement company. It's called Subs Nutrition. And yeah, basically design these products 
for me, if you want. Um, the goal was back then when I started the company. The company is Biostatics and the label is Substitution. I started this back in, yeah, it, it opened 2014. So the starting process was more like 2010 when I um, wanted to build things that are free of everything. Just a capsule, vegan, and back then without even magnesium sterate as lubricant. There's nothing in it. So back then it was really, I think now it's getting more and more, but it was really difficult to find companies to do that for you because they all tell you, no, we run these Bosch machines, they get ruined and stuff. I was just persistent until I had it because I wanted a better multi supplement as the thorn that I was using because I personally have also a few things that I need to genetically bypass and I wanted just to have like the perfect quality in these things. So my amino acids are essential amino acids, PCAs and then and a few other things like creatine, magnesium malate and taurine, ornithine aspartate. I mix those for years like just to figure out what is the best thing to activate your neurotransmitters, of course, regenerate and recover as fast as possible, alkalize your body, and of course, help liver phase one and two with detoxification. So this is what's in my mind when I design products like this. So this is the brand we use in the essential aminos. We use, um, I also have a functional medicine shake. It's based on, it's actually based on vegan things. Also the amino acids are fermented vegan amino acids, which is really important to have top-notch quality, no fillers, no nothing, just stevia for flavoring or xylitol. That's it. It doesn't taste as candy-like as the bodybuilding supplements, but it's it's quality. That's what it's all about. Awareness it's, also, it's also probably not loaded with cancer-causing sucralose or other, like, other garbage. <laughs> no, no way. I, I know these things, so there's no, the only artificial, uh, no, there's no artificial um, sweetener would get me. Whatever you use so stevia, for example, is a um, is a is not a medication. It's a natural medication. It's antimicrobial as well as xylitol. So mm -hmm. then use xylitol in gums, in um, toothpaste, and of course you can use xylitol or that's birch sugar uh, for to sweeten some things. We have we have both the best of both worlds. We have an antimicrobial plus a little bit of a sweetener and. Because, you know, if you, and I'm sure you did try amino acids in their pure form when you were a little, little bit younger and bought them in bulk, like I did back then, protein or bulk powders and all these things that were existing in early 2000s, they taste like shit and they don't dissolve. So there's a lot of work and experimenting going in there. And yeah, we also have, of course, a collagen. It's coming from wild caught cod. So those are Vikings I met that just um, fish their cod in Norway or up, like up there and then just prepare it on site. That's it. And that's what we put in our collagen. It's not made from any leathers or any bad things. It's a little bit of acerola, a cherry, vitamin C in it. And the functional medicine shake is basically, is based on um, um, brown rice protein. It has probiotics and prebiotics. It has glutamine. It has a, a few different things that you need to repair your gut system. So it's an overall stacking system so that we start from macro to micro and we don't need like a million of supplements, but let's say two handful and you can have everything. So I've invented a bone healing protocol, which is based on 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily before and after surgery. My, the goal is always to have the vitamin D3, the 25-OH above 70 nanograms so, uh, you guys sometimes have nanomoles so you have to multiply by 2.5 or divide by 2.5 why because then bone building works pretty well as a synergist and of course you know that cofactors like magnesium and vitamin k2 all these activated b vitamins for methylation and all these things it's all included in the protocol just to make it top notch and you don't because you know nutrients work in synergy you can't just give high doses of vitamin d3 and expect that everything is perfect. You need to know how to fine tune things. I always say nutrition is the motor and micronutrients are AMG tuning. You know, AMG from Mercedes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think about these things. So from macro to micro, I'm a big believer yeah. in food first for sure. G wagon, G wagon, G wagon. Um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. You got a G wagon? Oh, nice. I love it. I love it. Those are beautiful cars. Yes, um, the old one, the, like the really rough one that you can throw down from 15 meters. 
and it will still drive like back. Yeah, it's a military car basically. Heck yeah, that's it. All right, you're gonna you're gonna have to text me a picture after uh, yeah, yeah. after after we're done. Um, I wanted to ask you. So, if someone's listening and they want to pick up some of your supplements, your collagens, your 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 amino acids, some of these things that you mentioned, what's the website for them to do that? It's it's Sup's Nutrition S U P Z like Supreme Supplements with the Z in like Zoro. Yep. S U P Z. S Z sorry. S U P Z Nutrition dot com. And supznutrition.com nice and are you is this something do you have like where let's say a biological dentists in other parts of the world can they get packages from you for the people that they're treating can they get your your, your supplements and and packages and bundles and order them and give them to their patients to kind of help make sure that everyone's getting what they need so yes so this is the company is mostly at the moment in germany and german speaking countries and yes, the dentists I've trained, they all do this. So they can, they can, for example, have the bone healing protocol bundle so that they have everything in stock, including like the, yeah, the regimen. And it's always going on top of my food design concept so that it's pretty simple for them. They're kind of like going by dot by dot, like these old school pictures as a kid. Make yep. it easy. So making topic, making like, um, health easy or health fashionable would be the goal so, so yeah it, that of course we train dentists and of course they they see that it makes sense so this is my part i give a whole nutritional courses full day seminar for dentists naturopathic doctors coaches every, everybody who's interested can come and then you learn these things because in germany it's extremely difficult to say something about nutrients it's totally different in the u.s and you can market the shit out of it in the U.S. In Germany, you basically can say nothing. And yeah. I'm also a doctor, so I cannot say uh, not even a tiny bit. So this, the company by itself has to follow these so-called health claims. That means you write down there's vitamin C in it. Vitamin C helps to sustain healthy levels of vitamin C. Makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but in Germany, you literally can't do any any uh, advertisement. Makes really no sense at all. And as a what's doctor, that about? It's I think it's the the bigger companies having a thumb yeah. on it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, I, got, I got it. I read you. And yeah, <laughs> that makes it quite difficult because if people know that quality exists and there's also a doctor behind it formulating it and handpicking the stuff that's in there, it's quite valuable for these people. So we just started a year ago or two years ago to go a little bit into like everybody because we thought, well, why just give it to our patients or the other dentists for their patients? Everybody should get um, this kind of quality. So yeah, it's a little bit difficult to show, but it's growing and it's a fun project and it's one of my babies of a few companies besides yeah. Clinton, and yeah. they're all health related. This episode of the Biohacking Secret Show is also brought to you by the Organifi Biohacker Bundle. Organifi makes the best-selling greens juice on the market, but they also make an incredible gold juice that I drink almost every night before bed, a red juice that's loaded with antioxidants and phytonutrients, and a really delicious vegan protein. So we created the Biohacker Bundle as a way for you to get all of their best-selling products the same way that I take them on a daily basis. I do the greens in the morning, I do the red in the afternoon as a little pick-me-up, I use the protein post-workout, and I do the gold at night before bed to help wind down and decrease inflammation from the day so that I feel more cool, calm, and collected going into a deep, restful night's sleep. I love the Biohacker Bundle. It's, a, it's been a game changer for me, and if you guys want to check it out, we've hooked you up with a nice discount on all of those products. To get it, you go to Organifi.com forward slash biohacks. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash biohacks now. Tell us a little bit about Weston A. Price and some of his discoveries and how that influenced your journey and, and your, you know, process and practice today. Yeah, Weston A. Price is it's the, the first biological dentist. And yeah, I read his book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, years ago. And it was just obviously that he was just experimenting and just being logic like I was. It resonated with me because I was in university. I was also asking 
why am I learning this? Who invented all these things? And he was just back in the days looking at root canals, for example. This was his thing, root canals. Um, when I was looking into root canals, I initially found him and Dr. Thomas Levy. And he did these fascinating studies on rabbits. I don't know if you heard about these, but he basically, yeah, just um, observed or, yeah, observed his patients after root canals and said, hmm, it seems like they're making you chronically sick. Let's remove those root canals and figure out what happened. And then they just, he just put the tooth, the, the root canal tooth, under the skin of rabbits. And the rabbits developed, in 80% of all the cases, the same symptoms. In heart disease, it was 100% the same symptoms. So he, um, he postulated or um, hypothesized that it has something to do with any sort of microbes or toxins living in these um, root canals. He did this for 30 years. He has a huge compendium, and he was actually a very well-known dentist back then. Nobody listened to this because it was already a thing. Uh, and again, like the again, amalgam fillings, root canals are just a big profit-making thing. And a lot of dentists, actually conventional dentists, specialize in root canals. And I don't say anything about it because it's a very... Um, a very delicate skill you need, but from a biological and industry point of view or medical point of view, it literally makes no sense and actually harmful. And yeah, what he also did, he was kind of like an explorer, I would say, an experimenter like myself. And he went with the, with the ship, I reckon, um, to Swiss Alps, to the Aborigines, to Africa, to all sorts of more rural countries because he wanted to find or to see if there's a, if there's um, a causation or correlation between industrial processed foods and um, bad teeth. And when he went to rural, com uh, rural countries where they didn't have access to processed foods, which started back then, like sugar, wheat, dairy, and all the uh, highly refined um, oils, he uh, made a lot of pictures and yeah, these, and let's say the, the grandpas in Africa, they had the perfect teeth, all eight, like all wisdom teeth in there, no crowding, and perfect alignment, big palates, no breathing, no scoliosis, no narrow faces, but wide faces. He was amazed. And also he checked like the little kids that already had like gotten into contact early on with the processed food and they looked like monsters in the book. You should really check out the physical degeneration. It looked like the, 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 the faces were all crooked, scoliosis, the whole body, body structure and posture, and of course, all the teeth looked like, I just say shit, like really degenerated. That's why he said nutrition and physical degeneration. And he kind of, he sort of invented the first bone healing protocol. And he didn't call it that way because he just said, okay, to regenerate teeth, what they did in the what they, what he observed in these countries was that they was they were all eating some sort of um, cod oil or, or fish oils, and he didn't know back then, but it's vitamin E three, of course, we know. And also, they were eating lots of butter from grass-fed cows, basically. So he said, from cows that eat fast-growing grass, and he postulated that there was something in it called an activator X. And Chris Masterjohn, um, I think back in 2009, he discovered that um, factor, uh, the factor X is actually vitamin K2 in the MK7 form, which is, um, and butter is a rich source of it. So vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 are two critical bone and teeth building nutrients. And you don't find them in processed foods. It's just not existing besides the obvious, the obvious insulin and sugar pro uh, problems and inflammation. So he's literally, and I mention him in, in the book um, because he's a, he's a good, yeah, he's, I think, a little bit of, a, of his spirit. It's probably in my aura too um, because I'm, I started with nutrition and this was, was what got me, like before university, looking into how to optimize, optimize my health because I was trying to become very professional in my sports but um, was always drawn back because it was, a, yeah, getting sick all the time, chronic tonsillitis, and did a lot of partying and crashed at one point. So I just basically had to search for solutions to get me as healthy as possible. Nutrition was the basis. And then I worked from there and it took me a while, but now I have all this knowledge and I can give it back to all my patients. 
and help them on their health journey. Fantastic. Yeah, I had, I, I love nutrition and physical degeneration. I won't pretend that I, I read it cover to cover, but the images alone are, are worth a read to, um, to get the gist of what Weston A. Price was discovering. And you saw that when, when these indigenous cultures started consuming, you know, the white devils, sugar and bread and those sorts of things, their, their oral health and physical health quickly took a nosedive. Um, you had mentioned, you you'd mentioned the factor X, you know, the vitamin K2 and the MK7 form. It, it, there was a product that Chris Kresser introduced me to, God, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago called Green Pastures Blue Ice. And it has, you know, the fermented cod liver oil. They make one that also has butter. Are you familiar with that product? Is this something that you use or do you just kind of get it from food? And uh, what's your approach? I don't know. I'm not familiar with the product. Um, so I try to get as much as possible from food. But of course, um, in, in the whole bone healing protocol, we have there's vitamin K2. Of course, there's vitamin D3 and 20,000 IU. So I have to make sure that patients um, have the vitamin K supplemented. I cannot count on them eating the way I want, even if they say they will. So the vitamin K2 we use in our products is is from real natto. Natto is actually a vegan sauce. The only, actually the only plant-based uh, sauce is fermented soy called natto, N-A-T-T-O. And there's only it, one. It's a, it's a nasty smelling brew. Oh, wow. if, you, if you go get the real thing in Japan, it's like, it makes you want to vomit. We had a, a contest, a natto eating contest as part of a uh, as part of a scavenger hunt when we went out there to visit one of my buddies. And yeah, one of the things he had us all go eat natto, and we were all like, bleh, bleh. "It's awful," yeah. but good for you. It's really it's really difficult, in my opinion, to find a good organic natto at all. So it tastes like like you said, like you have to puke right away. That's why <laughs> most of the natto you find is mixed with and glutamate and lots of probably also sucrose and other cancer and or like chronic sick making ingredients so <laughs> difficult to find but the problem is if you i have to deal with all sorts of lifestyles and mindsets so i don't want to impose or, or tell patients dude you shouldn't go vegan because from a medical point of view it's not the best idea because maybe morally it's a good idea for him so i will just mm. make sure that if he is a vegan i'll supplement him so that he is optimal and that he has a nutrition for optimal health and growth because if you just go vegan it's it won't cut it you just lack too many nutrients protein is a problem choline creatine carnosine taurine b12 and for example vitamin k2 in nature in plants is not existent it's mostly vitamin k1 besides you would eat natto which you won't and vitamin k2 for uh, from for an omnivore is not a big deal. It's in butter, it's in eggs, it's in also in cheeses, it's in all sorts of um, yeah, just regular protein sources. So it's not a big deal for regular eating folks, but for vegans, it's a it's a big thing. So. Dom, do you use any micronutrient testing? Like sometimes with our clients, we'll use like the, the spectra cell micronutrient testing. Uh, Genova's got a, a NutriVal test. We'll periodically use those. Do you mess with any of those or not so much? You can just, you just kind of assume that if they're a vegan, they're missing some of these, some of these key nutrients because they're not in plant-based foods. What's your approach there? So we, we generalize the initial phase a bit because you don't see me before you see me in surgery. You only see me virtually. It's just too many patients inquiring. And it's actually, in my opinion, the more effective way because they're coming from all over the world. So they have everything up front. So they will just get an 80, 20 thing so that we know they are loaded. Even if they maybe don't lack something, even it's just micronutrients. So you maybe have a little bit too much. So that's the initial phase. And then if they're in the clinic and in the office, we, of course, take another blood work again, at least for vitamin D3 and a, a few other critical things, and then individualize the protocol. Because it's so much in one thing and we do so many things, it's not necessary at that point to get into NutriVal or specific, specify it. But if they come for health optimization later on and we want to go into details, there's, I have um, developed a complete comprehensive um, 
yeah, blood work from functional medicine, blood work that I use on my body or on all patients, if they're interested in it. So I don't think this is necessarily to go up front. You can easily go climb a few ladders just by doing a few things 80-20. They have to be structured for sure. And yeah, top notch. And then, of course, we use all these things. And then also, of course, I have a lot of um, co, um, co-doctors. They maybe do a chelation challenge later on. But first things first. And the comprehensive, so the comprehensive um, can you say comprehensive blood work panel? I, this is like a blood work panel according to my ideas. So we will look at like regular... Um, CBCs and of course the full thyroid panel, the full sexual hormone panels, like basically probably like Nutravel besides intracellular um, intracellular heavy metals, we will do that separately because I like to first know what to find you, like the basics. Most people lack basics. Mm-hmm. They, they fine tune the heck out of it, but they don't have, they didn't check their minerals. So they're asking, why is my red blood cell count so low? I'm doing all things crazy, even going to hyperbaric, but then they have no minerals. So they didn't even check the red blood cell mineral, magnesium, and zinc. So they're 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 optimizing longevity, like taking a resveratrol or NAD or something like that, but they haven't first mitigated the leading causes of death. Yeah, yes, exactly. And then they asked me about OPC and all these things. And I was like, what is your protein intake? Yeah, I drank the celery juice this morning. It's like, what? Yeah, how, how is your body able to re- regenerate? So first things first, I'm a big fan of um, the cake before the icing. And this is nutrition. You can get a lot from nutrition. Of course, it's quality dependent. So I have my own store concepts called health food concept stores, superfood stores, where we teach these things, basically just how to, how to time macronutrients. And I just tell patients, okay, go with 1.5 to 2 grams of protein a day and divided by three to six meals, whatever, maybe per, do uh, per, per kilogram, right? 1.5 to, to two grams or 2.5 grams per kilogram. I would say to two grams. So if you okay. bottle, you can go even higher. If it's a huge case, you have lots of surgery, to, you could even go higher. I don't see a problem going higher. I'm also not Pro- provided digestion's good. Of course, but the digestion starts in your mouth. As long as you have all these things we talked about in your mouth, you have a dysbiosis, and you have so many toxins, you have a leaky gum, which starts before leaky gut. So gut, my, oral microbiome first, and then gut microbiome. If you have an oral microbiome dysbiosis, by having all things installed, you have a gut dysbiosis. It won't make any sense. So you have to stop. Look at this. You eat here. This is your gut entrance. This is where saliva comes in. This is where the enzymes come. This is where, you, where your foods get digested. And this is where you swallow things. And then there will be the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, liver, all these things. What do you think if anything leaches out of there toxin-wise or like you lack nutrients, health actually starts in your mouth? And in functional medicine, this is still an area where, um, yeah, where it's not talked about. It's kind of like you go to a course, you learn about nutrition, about information, about all these things, about the whole health matrix. But, and maybe, oh, there's dentists and there would be, you should, should chelate um, heavy metals. But what about the full mouth thing? Why didn't you not check there? And about, the, for example, Tom Levy or all these doctors say at least 70% of all chronic disease starts in your mouth. And we're living in the epidemic of chronic disease. So COVID, for example, um, you know that insulin resistance and all these things. Uh, low, have- low, vi- low vitamin D, 10 times yeah. increased risk of death from COVID. Yes, low vitamin D3. So we optimize this already. Then... 10 times higher risk of COVID when you're insulin resistant or have any sort of metabolic. You want to know why insulin resistant is also related to, uh, with things in your mouth? Do you know? No. So in your mouth, let's say root canal or these cavitations, you will have an ongoing cytokine storm or ongoing cytokines like TNF-alpha, IL, uh, interleukin-1, beta, IL-6. And also in these, in these um, jawbone areas, you have this cytokine called Rantes, which is more like a chemokine. And Rantes blocks the insulin receptor, as well as IL-6 blocks the insulin receptor. All sorts of heavy metal block your, insulin resist, uh, block your insulin receptor. So it's all the same. All the topics you listen to in biohacking and in functional medicine and health optimization in all our field, 
is the same in your mouth, besides that nobody's talking about the mouth because it's still the part for the dentist who doesn't get the health optimization part. So my view of an optimal doctor is a health optimization specialist who then happens to be, let's say like my, me personally, also a specialist in oral surgery or a specialist in hyperbaric or a specialist in knee surgery, whatever. But the code on how to optimize health and longevity should be should basic for every coach that has to deal or every doctor that has to deal with health. We're treating health and optimizing health, not uh, um, not treating sickness or looking for um, yeah prevention of sickness. What is this like? A sick care system, not a health care system. I, this is I heard something like this. So absence of disease is what you learn in university. The goal for all my patients when they come to me and get a treatment plan is how can I make sure that this patient optimizes the health and how can I make sure that everything is as clean AF as my man Tim Gray, who hooked me up with you. Yeah, and, Tim's, and Tim's fantastic. He would always say epic AF, like as <laughs> Tim, for, for the listeners, Tim puts on the Health Optimization Summit in, uh, in London, correct? Yeah, he puts it in, uh, up in London and Tim basically is in it for his health optimization his, himself. So I'm allowed to talk about him. He's also my patient. We actually did surgery today for him. Oh, and nice. Yeah, I had to remove one more mercury toxic tooth because his whole journey in the field of biohacking and health optimization started with mercury toxicity, like we started our podcast an hour ago. And yeah. he found out all various things, went to see loads of dentists and all things biohacking, kind of like in the movie Root Cause, and then at one point got introduced to me by our German fellow biohacker called Max from Flowgrade. Mm -hmm. and, and then he invited me to the Health Optimization Summit. We didn't even met there, just fist bump once, but then he came to see me in Germany and we initially clicked like brothers from different mothers, you know. It's like we hang a lot and have lots of fun and I made, made him, like I told you, a full treatment plan looked for cavitations, which he didn't knew of, even if he had seen a lot of bilateral dentists, these chronic inflammations in your jawbone. Um, I had to remove a few um, divided teeth, and I told him to remove one or two more. I mean, he was like, ah, no, let's do it this and this way. So now, the last half year, he learned a lot from me in this field, and today, um, because we also tested it with Cavitat, it's a new device where you can look into bone structures with ultrasound on top of the gold standard, which, which is a cone beam scan. So we found that this tooth... I was going to ask you about that. It's a very toxic tooth, so my specialty is removing teeth, cleaning it with ozone, with neurotherapy, with we use PRP, APF membranes, whatever, and then if it's clean the socket, I will place a ceramic implant. This is my specialty. This is what you read at the beginning. So I was able to place a ceramic implant for him the last time, this time again. So he, after this, he was in, in we call it, parasympathetic mode on healing and recovery, rest and digest. He looked like stone. He felt like stone. He will heal and he will detox like shit because these things hold your body back. You take it out like a splinter. Your body starts, organ function works better and you need loads of binders. And of course we do binders a lot, but no active chelation. Just optimize your body's endogenous, um, yeah, let's say uh, sanitary work in the liver and in the colon or whatever, so. Yeah, all, all great points. I was gonna ask, um, I, we have some rapid fire questions. I wanna be respectful of your time too, but you're covering so many, uh, so many great topics. You, you've mentioned cavitations um, and the cone beam. You've mentioned root canals. We've talked a little bit about, about both of those things. Um, I feel like they're, they're a little bit ambiguous and overlooked by many people. I, I did a cone beam knowing that it's the highest, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but my understanding is that it's the highest dose of allowed radiation by the FDA. Um, and it's, you know, your head, right? I still had it done because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any dental abscesses or, or cavitations or anything like that. Do you believe that the cone beam is a powerful tool? Do you try to only use it when necessary? What are your thoughts around that? Oh, because I'm a surgeon and because I look for these um, root, root cells, I have to do a cone beam also legally. But the cone beam in comparison to a CT is 
a, a CT is factor 100 in terms of radiation. So a cone beam is a lot of radiation. It's kind of like one flight to the US, like long, one long distance flight. Okay. It's okay. You, I think you can That's compensate. Not bad. It's not too bad because it's all digitally nowadays. So right. early, like these old school panoramic X-rays that were analog, this was the same dose. But because everything is digitally, it's way less um, radiation. But still, of course, you don't do a cone beam like all the time. But if you have to do surgery, then you have to do one. And uh, yes, we do this. It's the gold standard. And I think every good surgeon needs to do a co cone beam because you want to make sure that you don't, um, first of all, miss something because you cannot diagnose any cavitations or any cysts around teeth perfectly without it. And also, of course, because you don't want to hurt any structures like your nerve. Um, this is why cone beam is mandatory in our office. And it will always be done when you, when you come in. So the first initial thing, the first initial treatment plan will always be with your panoramic 2D. It's just pre preliminary. We fine-tune it when you're in the office. And that works perfectly. That makes sense. And for someone who's not familiar with the cone beam or, or you know, someone new that walks into your office, how do you explain it to them? So they know it's on my website, it's explained. It's a three-dimensional um, x-ray, basically. And it only does, in this case, it's only doing the jaw. And it's kind of like a CT scan, but just way less radiation to see a three-dimensional um, image of your whole jaw structure. You can see, like, slice the whole jaw up or lower. You see your sinuses three-dimensionally. You see the nerve. You see everything which you can't see on a regular, a regular panoramic or regular tiny image, a dental image, is two-dimensional. Of course, you cannot see what's behind it, what's underneath it. Yeah, and you need this. For example, for these cavitations, you cannot see on a, on a two-dimensional picture. Sure. Yeah, I had I had uh, taken a baseball to the face playing. Uh, I was playing third base going into my freshman year of high school. Uh, and, you know, I was... Anyway, long story short, baseball hit me, broke my jaw, and oh. I, I lost this tooth here. Which one? This one. You have a bridge? Yep, I got a bridge there. And I wanted to get the cone beam because I was doing a nasal rinse. I took some, you know, some warm water with saline, and I put a drop of uh, Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo in there, and I mixed it up, and I did a nasal rinse with it. And I felt my whole jaw like where it had been broken, like almost start bubbling. Like when you pour hydrogen peroxide on an open wound and I was like, that's not normal, you know? And, uh, and so I went, I got the cone beam and they said everything was, everything was kosher and, and good in there. Um, but yeah, I figured, you know, with the missing tooth, with a broken jaw, I could have a scenario that, that may be harboring certain pathogens and things that could, as you mentioned earlier, lead to cardiovascular disease or whatever on a long enough timeline. Um, do you, a couple rapid fire questions. What are some of the foods that you most often recommend that people aren't eating? Probably broth is, um, like collagen rich foods, organs, and fermented stuff. Brunschweiger, and liverwurst. Yeah, I love liverwurst. Me, Me too. We got some inside. It's fantastic. Yeah, and I just, yesterday, I just showed Tim a, a real German liverwurst, the gray one. Yeah. And it's without preservatives, without nitrates. It's just pure stuff. It tastes so good, so natural. But of course, you have to like stuff like this. Um, but I probably present this a lot. And of course, essential amino acids are bigger, but it's not food. I, I call I, I just for me it's food, but it's a supplement, and this is probably the thing that I tell most people to start with because they just lacking nutrition. Yeah, but it's probably yep. broccoli and <laughs> liverwurst. What was the other words you were just or the other sauce that you were just saying? Brun Brunschweiger. It's uh, it's similar. It's similar to liverwurst. It has a lot of organ meats mixed in. I've for a while I used to get both from. U.S. Wellness Meats. Their website's grasslandbeef.com. The, the, the flavor is okay. Like we, there's a, a grocery store in town here, and I was like, "What's your best liver uh, liverwurst?" And they gave it to us, and it's phenomenal. 
just like we're all in there. The dogs are addicted to it. You know, my mom puts uh, one of our one of our dogs, Cody, got Lyme disease. So he, my mom's been giving him doxycycline for the Lyme disease and just she puts it in the liverwurst and he'll eat anything if, if you put it in liverwurst. Um, it's so good. And my kids, yeah. love, they, they love it too. I don't know if any, like, I just grew up with this stuff. So I'm, yeah. I, 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 I did too. I did too. And, but I think like if someone's a little bit skeptical, it, it's one of my favorite ways to get organ meats and you can put a little, if you're, if you're not about the taste or just the, it's the psychology of it. I don't think our listeners are there anyway. Um, but you know, you can put a little stone ground mustard on there and, and, and have a few bites and you're still getting some of those organ meats and you know, you don't, you don't have to make a meal out of it. Um, what are your thoughts on, on 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide as an oral rinse? You could do this, yeah. Why not? This is yeah. something. We to, this is something. We, I would probably. I would probably do more uh, more natural things. Yeah. You yeah. Could do the HOCL, which is pretty good as an oral cleaner. HOCL. Uh, yes, that's something that came up again with COVID. This is stuff that dentists use for decades. Um, it's high hydrochloric. High. Wait, what is it in English? Yeah, HOCL is correct. You will just Google it. Okay, and cool. You use this as disinfectant. You spray it in your mouth. You can spray it on your hands. Hydrogen peroxide, you can use it as a disinfectant. It's not too harmful, I think, if you just spit it out later on. I'm more of a fan of natural things to disinfect. Like, we do a lot of coconut oil pulling and mix in some essential oils like peppermint and oregano. <laughs> <laughs> peppermint and oregano and yeah just leave this for 50 minutes in your mouth but then make sure you spit it out and somebody yeah, yeah. somebody asked me lately can i use so i use the the mct oil from from dave asprey and i was like i wouldn't use it it's way too it's way too precious to spit it out again afterwards just use the regular coconut oil and put some stuff in it and you could do propolis with it um which is also antiviral so also, I'm not a big fan of disinfecting your microbiome. If your microbiome is healthy, I'm more a fan of like using natural things. Like Ayurvedic medicine uses like tongue cleaning and yeah. rinses with, um, uh, um, with the oil pulling. So are you a fan of oil pulling? I tried it for a little bit and it just felt so time consuming to have oil in your mouth for like 20 minutes and you're swishing it around. It's kind of a lot of work. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Do you do it yourself? So I use it strategically. I don't do it every day, like religiously, but for example, if I feel that something is a little bit weird in my system or maybe some viruses are going on or like, I feel that I, it's a little bit dry or whatever, I will do it. And I, I actually, it's not, it is time consuming if you do it on your, if it, if you do it on its own, but you could basically, what I do is I just put it in my mouth and with a few drops of essential oils, like um, peppermint and oregano, it kind of tastes like a, a pizza, I think. And then if I prepare my food in the morning, like when I cook, I just have it in my mouth and when I cook and do the things and then I spit it out. So I do it while I do something else. I wouldn't, uh, no, no, that wouldn't work that I just preserve time for just doing coconut oil pudding. That would <laughs> yeah, you had me thinking about that earlier when you were talking about digestion starting in the mouth. And yeah. we're, we're in a society now where so many people have stopped cooking for themselves. They've gotten too busy to cook. And you mentioned that you do cook. And I, I feel like when, when a meal is being prepared, really and we know that food is coming that's where some of these gastric juices and you know saliva and all of that starts to starts to occur and i'm wondering if there's a connection between poor digestion and the fact that everyone is so damn rushed and few people are preparing their food what are your thoughts on that yeah man that's 100 percent correct so i've been there and but yes digestion or nutrition or eating is parasympathetic your body needs to be in rest and digest mode. Preparing food, like you already said it, you feel you get more saliva, you get tuned into the smells. This also activates saliva, and saliva is all the enzymes coming in that help you later on digest. You should never basically eat in a rush. So I have a pretty structured day so that I have time to do this, and I'm used to preparing my foods 
ever since I started with um, strength training or bodybuilding, we would call it back in the days. I was just a guy in university who had Tupperware with like all, all the stuff. So it's just used, used it. But every evening when I come home and every morning, I, I would do a breakfast for the kids or for the family, for me, and also basically cook it to times three so I can take it with me for surgeries so that I have always good food. And in the evening, I always cook again just to relax me. And then it's mm. more like out. Yeah, you will see my meals. They are like tightly. It's, of course, based on macronutrients, but of course, it's based on flavors and mixing. And it takes an hour, and it's just like socializing. So these days when Tim is here, me and my wife and Tim, we just chat and cook. And I think you should have time for this because this is part of our, our life. It's not all in the rush and then smacking down your, your, your food. You will probably be better off if you don't eat, if you're in a stress mode. So mm -hmm. I, when I'm in surgery, I make sure I have, I don't, I do surgeries like when I go in, I go all in and I only do a break if the patient needs to go to the toilet. So I have to have something that is pre-digested. So I will drink a little bit of collagen or maybe have easy digestible proteins with me, but no full meals. I have a big meal in the morning because when I work out, it's also in the morning. So it's post-workout and then another, another huge meal in the evening. So in between, it's more like snacks. Nice, nice. It's all, and, it's all by instinct, basically. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, sort of intuitive eating, intuitive feeding. It's the goal for everybody that if you finally get it, but what, basically you have to retrain all these people because they're so brainwashed. And I've been there, so I'm doing this. I have just 20 years on my back in terms of this, so I have had time to experiment. But the goal is not to track any things with the goal in mind that you have to have these macros and this and this and this. So then what you could do is like you eat the stuff that you love. Of course, you take care of the health. Yeah, no, no crab foods. I don't eat any crab foods at all. But that doesn't mean I don't eat carbs or something because people are afraid of carbs. People are afraid of fats. They just don't get it. It's just a protein, the building block, carbs and fats are energy sources. You just, I just don't mix them. I just do protein carbs or protein fats. That's basically it. And that works well for my digestion. And intuitively, I eat, you can I actually attracted lately with my fitness ball but just at the end of the day i just wanted to see what i really eat in a day because tim or other people they were just saying dude you eat like a machine it's insane and i literally i eat it's not too much basically i eat about three to five thousand calories a day and it's about more like three grams per kilogram of protein because i'm just hungry on protein it was always like that I don't like too many vegetables. I didn't eat it as a kid. I eat them because I learned to. Um, and carbs is depending on sports. I'm more a carb guy, actually. I've been in the ketogenic thing 15 years ago, tried the lower carb and everything. But it's about 200 to 600 grams of carbs a day and 50 to 120 grams of fats, depending on my days. That's it. And it's just by intuition. And I could even do more. <laughs> Nice, nice. Do, do you floss? And if yes, how often? No, I don't floss. I, I think it's stupid. And in nature, you wouldn't floss. And the problem is, you, you, I would use a floss in one equation if I have meat or something stuck in between my teeth and it will rot in there. Then I use something, a, a toothpick or floss. But the problem is, most people that I see using a floss are not as skilled with their hands, so they just rip it in and they bleed. Oh, I'm bleeding. And then basically the good thing is they will, they will stop because they bleed. But the problem is with the floss and you bleed is that you always rip off, rip off this tight junction which you have. So the gingiva, your tissue here, the gum, is mm -hmm. your is outside body like this skin. You know, if you have a cut in here, you have to make sure that there's no bacteria coming in there because this is leaky skin. Then we have leaky gum. And in the mouth, it's, in the gut, it's called leaky gut. So you are basically opening for all the bacteria that live in your mouth. And it's way more than bacteria that live in here. When you cut in something and opening into your bone and into your insides. So leaky gum before leaky gut. You should check out my Instagram today because basically the funny thing is I have one post and it's saying... Oral microbiome first, gut microbiome second. And I'm explaining a little bit because it's, yeah, it's the same. It's like, you know, that enterocytes or the gut system is basically outside skin. And if it's leaky, like this skin or like this skin, it's a problem because pathogens and undigested food, whatever comes into your system, you get allergic. 
Just think a step further. You have the same in your mouth. I just call it leaky gum. It's not existing. I just point the word because I say that so much. Beautiful. What's your Instagram? It's my <laughs> Dr. Dom one, D-R-D-O-M-E with a one. Nice, nice. Do, do you use electroacupuncture according to Vol as a diagnostic tool or in your practice? We don't use electroacupuncture because Vol did the full, and we know which tools um, is according to which meridian because of Vol. And what we use, we, so I'm trained by Dr. Klingert, so I'm trained in autonomic response testing. So we mm-hmm. are able to test everything, muscle test it. It's an elaborate system that Dr. Klingert um, invented. Besides just strong arm and weak arm, it's a little bit more detailed. Just to find out. But of course, we use all things technically we have and then use this to fine tune. Beautiful. And if, if I were a, a, a patient and I said, Doc, what, what toothpaste should I get? What toothpaste should I use? What would you tell me? Oh. So in my opinion, there's not yet the perfect toothpaste. I've seen a few that are really good. Just go fluoride-free, no-brainer. Titanium dioxide-free, no-brainer. I would, I would just go to Whole Foods or any sort of health food store and find these things on Google online. Um, good things are often on a coconut oil base. You, you can find loads of um, DIY recipes on the internet. And there are also a few tooth, tooth powders, I would say. It's not like paste, it's powders. They also contain some Ayurvedic herbs. So there are good strategies that you could use. But just go with no chemicals if possible, because that's nothing you need. Beautiful. Last question. Someone who is listening, them or a loved one is going to the dentist, and they are wondering if they should get fluoride. What is your answer and why? No, no fluoride. Why? Because it's just not necessary and it's really toxic. Fluoride, um, yeah, of course, the theory for dentists is that fluoride will form some hydroxyl appetite and just goes into your teeth and makes them stronger. But this is based, again, on, I don't know, any sort of research sponsored by the companies that produce fluoride toothpaste. It's literally not healthy. It forms various um, salts in your stomach like that are really toxic. And it's, yeah, I would never use anything remotely toxic in my body. Of course, the dentist will tell you, you will spit it out. And it's only tiny bits. But if you don't need it, why, need, why use it? If you can go with natural things and your tooth should be hard as stone, that's for sure. But would you want to have any chemical in your tooth or would you want to have maybe magnesium or minerals that you eat or that you supplement in your tooth? I go with the latter. Go in the sun. Sunlight will make your tooth go strong. You sit in the sun, dude. I'd love to. All all, all day. I was in surgery all day. (laughs) Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, Dr. Dominic, Nishwitz, this has been fantastic, brother. I appreciate you. I, I, I've learned a lot, and uh, we'll give, give you some some knucks through the through Zoom. Where can people follow you? It, it, you? You mentioned the food design concept. Is that something they could download? Where do people need to go to get more of you and stay up to date with things you're working on? Yeah, you can find a lot of things on our website, the Dean Aesthetics. That you can see it in the Dr. Dom link tree or tap bio. There's a few links in there. Um, websites, articles, you can see it on the bodies like the International Society for Medicine and Bentology. You find a lot of these knowledges in Instagram because I designed my Instagram to be a health magazine. And there's a lot. Go Just go a year back and follow this. There's the whole food design concept basically in there and as easy as possible. And of course, you find me on YouTube. Dr. Dominic Nischwitz is the name. And I will also certainly, you will probably send me an email. I'll send you everything for the, sh- for the show notes if you have that. If that's that, that, that would be wonderful. We'll include all that stuff. And Dr. Dom, it's been great hanging out. Appreciate you. You're wise cat. You're doing great work. Let's, let's get at least, at least a legion of thousands of other biological dentists doing this because it's an industry where if I were to give my honest opinion from the stories I've heard from people, there's a lot of folks who are now calling themselves biological dentists because it's kind of trendy, but they're not really doing anything in the same ballpark 
ballpark of what you're doing. And the more people that you train, I think the more good can be done. And the more people can once again, start trusting the folks who call themselves biological dentists. So thank you for what you do. Let's, uh, let's, let's keep doing good in the world. Thank you very much, Anthony. This was a really good point. And yeah, we have to train this way of biological dentistry, which is the overlap of functional medicine, health optimization, and high-tech dentistry so that patients will know which one is a good one. Yeah. I totally agree. And guys, if, you, if you're listening and you're seeing a dentist that um, is o an, o open to learning, maybe give them, send them this episode, ask them to give it a listen, ask for their thoughts on it. And uh, if you got value from this episode, uh, leave us, leave us a review on Apple podcasts and pick up uh, Dr. Nishwitz's book. There it is. It's all in your mouth available on Amazon and all places that good books are sold. Dr. Well, Nishwitz, you're the man. You're the man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. What's up, guys? Anthony here, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Biohacking Secrets Show. One of my favorite things to do is helping men and women like you feel what it's like with the body you've always wanted and all day energy that starts the moment you wake up and doesn't quit. Over the past decade, we've created a proprietary health assessment that helps me to identify the unique toxicities and deficiencies that may be holding you back from the life that you deserve. And what we've discovered in doing this with now thousands of CEOs, executives, professional athletes, businessmen, Hollywood celebrities, and entrepreneurs is that there's always room for improvement and optimization. Whether you're already performing at a high level or you have that feeling inside your heart that you're capable of more, the single fastest way to unlock your potential is to upgrade your mind and your body. And there's no program on earth that does that faster or to a greater magnitude than our one-on-one -on -one consulting program at www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash coaching. We start with our proprietary health assessment that screens you for vitamin deficiencies like A, D, magnesium, iron, etc., high cholesterol and heart disease, high blood pressure, digestive disorders, hidden infections like Lyme, Epstein-Barr, parasites, SIBO, candida, and more that can just drain your energy in the background, especially if you don't know about them. Anxiety, depression, and cognitive disorders, autoimmune disease, adrenal fatigue, thyroid issues, mold toxicity, heavy metals, environmental toxins, and other genetic risk factors like MTHFR, APOE status, your glutathione production, and many more. We even recommend the specific tests that I use with my one-on-one -on -one clients if they're relevant for you in figuring out your biological age and identifying those key areas and opportunities that can take your life to the next level. From there, we create a customized game plan along with a personalized supplement protocol to help you optimize your weight and energy at the cellular level. And for our platinum clients, we even include a personalized workshop with me in Delray Beach, Florida. Most of the year, this program's full with a waiting list, but we just had a couple spots open up and I wanted to offer them to the listeners of the Biohacking Secrets show first. So if you're interested in seeing what it might look like for us to work together, head over to www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash coaching. That's www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G and fill out the short application form. If you're pre-approved, you'll be given the opportunity to book a time to connect with someone on our team and see if it's a fit. Thank you so much for being a part of this community, and I look forward to potentially going on this journey together.